last one I'm gonna show you um, also involves a mask, but not quite masking tape. What I've done is uh, cut out, or sorry, I've drawn a letter that I wanna use or a shape I wanna use, and I've cut it out. And I've kind of made my own stencil. So I have an S that I can use and I've taped the bottom here. So this could be a stencil for an S. Trace the S onto the paper and I've added um, the interior lines and just make sure that you trace it exact. And you should be using a light pencil line um, because the watercolor is translucent, which means you'll be able to see through the color. In this case, I did it darker so that you could see what I'm doing, but it's better to use a light line uh, than a dark line. So first we're going to just paint the, the actual letter. Do whatever you want. You can experiment um, with the salt technique or the graded wash or some of the dabbing techniques. Whatever you want, just fill in your letter. and Multi-multi-tonal like wash. So I just blended the colors together and then I threw some salt on at the end. Um, and then remember I told you if you put a color beside another one and they're both wet, then they will mix. So I decided to leave a white space in between to show, you know, the different areas. Um, and we could always go over that with black after, but that's why I left the white areas in between so they don't mix, kind of like what's happening here. That's what we don't want. So I'm gonna let that dry and then this isn't on. super dry yet, but I'm going to move on to the next kind of step. And remember this that we used, um, our, you can put that right on top and try to match perfectly so that you're covering all of your painted areas. Okay, so that's that. Um, next, I'm gonna get my paintbrush um, and I'm going to make it, like I'll have a lot of color on it. So I'll pick what color, blue, blue maybe. I like, I don't know, I'm going for blue today. Um, and you're gonna use the splatter technique and I'm sure you use this as a kid. But basically you need to have, um, so pretty colored paintbrush and then another object to hit it on and it will kind of splatter its way if you just do it like this sometimes it works but it's easier to, to hit it on something so I'm going to show you what that looks like just try to stay within the page and not off of your page uh, like I did okay, so I've made a mess and I got over my table but you will have this clean because you'll have a newspaper down uh, like I always tell you to do but I don't have newspaper so I'll have to just clean the table after so I've done the splatter paint and I'm just going to remove my mask and hopefully um, most of my letter will stay clean and the kind of blotted splatter paint area will stay around this. Now, if you wanted to, you can take either a marker or there's even black paint, um, watercolor paint that you can use. And when this is dry, you can outline it. Uh, or you can even use acrylic paint um, and outline what you need to outline. I added some more lines in the background to add emphasis and uh, movement. So uh, you have the liberty at school to have a variety of colors, whereas at home I only have red, yellow, and blue, and some white. So I'm kind of making the colors that I want. Um, the one thing to remember when working with acrylic is you want to move from the back to the front. So you do your background colors first, um, and then the last layer would be more of your outlining um, or the upper layer, like the top, whatever's on the top. So you can see I started painting the background. I'm doing a light blue, but you can see my pencil marks. And the reason for that uh, is because sometimes acrylic paint is translucent. And in order to fix it, what you need to do is add some more white into your paint and that will make it more opaque. Um, so you won't be able to see the pencil lines. I've done my first layer, but you can still kind of see, sorry, there's a shadow because of the light above me. Uh, you can still kind of see some pencil lines. So if that happens to you, just um, do, do a second layer if you already added white. Um, but now I'm gonna go through and add um, another color. Um, and when you paint, try to keep your brush on an angle because that tip, the one that's closest to the line, will make a cleaner edge instead of having like a rough edge like this. Sometimes it's due to the way you're holding the paintbrush and sometimes it's because you don't have enough paint on the paint. Um, and I just wanted to show you that you can do the same technique that we did with watercolor with the masking tape. Um, and I also want to show you how the color underneath, so the background color might, oh gosh, I got some blue in there, might show through. So you're going to want to do some layers if that happens. And um, additionally, there's two things to note about acrylic paint that's a little different than watercolor. The first thing is that you're going to see your brush stroke. So right now you can kind of see I'm going in a diagonal direction, but if I was to go across the page, you're going to see those lines. So it's best to stay in one direction to avoid that. Um, the second thing I wanted to note is that you can actually blend right onto your page. So if I wanted maybe the 
the outsides or the edge of my letter to be lighter, I can just add some white to the edge um, and it would make it lighter, just blending it on the page. You don't need to mix the color, you can just add it straight to the page. Okay, so here's what it looks like when you remove the tape. You get a nice clean edge. And I did put the tape on my clothes to get a bit of lint on it so that it wouldn't uh, rip off the page. Um, so that's a nice clean edge there. And you can do the same thing now. So you can put tape around uh, where you want to keep the blue. And you can paint in the white areas. I it pretty much in. Um, I did this one freehand. And now I'm going to work on the sides. You, I think I should have done the sides first. Um, just because you could have painted over it with the pink, but at this point it doesn't really matter. Um, I just did some edges here so I don't have to paint them freehand. You will need a thinner brush for something like this. And just like watercolor, if you paint beside it and it's still wet, it's going to blend. So like I have some thick edges here. So these are going to take a while to dry, which means I need to stay away from any of those edges. Um, and I need to make sure my paint is dry before I do a layer beside it. I'm just using a dry brush technique here where you just take some paint um, on a really dry brush and you add it over whatever you're painting on and it will leave a, a textured effect on the area you're painting. I don't have the color black at home so I had to make my own version of black by mixing colors. Um, I just want to show you that it is a little difficult to outline using a paintbrush and this is the thinnest paintbrush I had at home. Um, but it doesn't help that the paint I have at home isn't a very good quality. As you can see, it's kind of see-through. So here's how it looks like when you use paint. And then I'll show you the next box done with a marker. I also started to outline the edges of my work. Um, but I did run into a few wet areas. And if the area is wet, you're going to get it on your marker. And you'll have to kind of wipe it off um, and let the area dry before you continue drawing on it finished outlining everything and you'll notice at the bottom of the D that um, it's a little fuzzy and that's because I ran into some wet paint. Uh, I've also added some shapes in the background to add some interest and some lines in the letters to make them look more 3D.